Hi, my name is Rem, long time no see, right? Well, I'm back from holiday season, so let's continue where we left off. We implemented game creation, but we cannot see the result yet, so that's what we're going to do in this episode, we'll finish with index page. And also we'll talk a little bit about a very important topic, which you need to consider as early in development as possible, relationships between client, application and server. So right now, in games list component, all we have is a simple dummy functional component, and this component gets games collection via props, but does nothing with it so far. And we pass this data from games page, and here is where we fetch them. So basically we have everything we need to implement index page. We just need to iterate through collection and render it, so let's do it. We go to games list component, so here instead of this dummy text, we need to iterate and return array of components. So let's enclose our list in div with class UI for cards. These are cool semantic UI classes that will align cards for us. Next, we map through games and return game card component. This component will take game as prop and we need to provide key for React, so we use game ID for that. Of course, we need to import this component, so let's go to the top of the file and import game card from game card. Now let's create gamecard.js file. And here let's define another functional component. It takes a game prop. And let's define this prop in prop types right away. It's object prop and it is required. This div has class UI card. Inside we'll have two divs with classes image and content. And inside of content we'll have header. In image we render image tag and set source to game.cover and also we'll specify alt prop as well, game cover. And in header we render game.title. And that's it. If we go now to index page we see the game. Cool. So let's add another one. We add seasons, we provide thumbnail and when we submit the game we are redirected to index page and see this game right away. Well, that's a lie actually and that's a segue to important topic I mentioned earlier. But first, let's go to server code and add timeout of 2 seconds so we can see the problem. So we just wrap our route code in set timeout and set 2000 milliseconds. Now let's go to add new game page and add another game. Quadruple is this time. So press save and now you can see the problem. We make a request to server to fetch games so it takes those 2 seconds to render game here. But we see the previous 2 games right away. What we missed is we didn't add this new game to Redux store right away when we just created it. But that gives us the reason to talk about how you want to design communication between client application and backend server. So roughly there are three ways you can do it. First one is traditional Ajax approach. Every time we revisit page we make Ajax request to server during which we render loading indicator. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a type form service, excellent service for creating forms. And as you can see, when I change page in side menu, every time I do it, I see loading indicator. No caching is happening on the client. Well, if you want this kind of experience, then you don't need to use Redux at all. Just use pure React and store state in components because you will refetch data every time component mounts. Second approach is the most common one for Redux applications. Cache data on client in Redux store while doing the same Ajax request in the background. In this case, we see results almost immediately and we can be sure the data is up to date because we make background request and if something changes, our UI will be updated accordingly. And the third approach is real-time application approach, which works perfectly with Redux. With this approach, server will push data to client when it needs to and client will get data and update UI. No need for extra background requests to make sure that data is synced. Just a dream. Ok, so most of the time, for the most of the projects out there, you'll be good with the second approach that we are implementing here. So let's fix this issue. For that, let's open actions.js file and in our create game redux thunk action, we need to add another then where we'll dispatch pure action. So we add then, it gets data and we dispatch add game action and pass data.game to it. Next, let's define add game action create a function, and as usual, it just returns action object with type add game and game data. And let's define constant add game. Cool, we have action. Now we need to react to it in our reducer, so let's open games reducer. Here, let's import add game constant from actions, and then add new case for this add game, 
and here we return new array that contains all items from current state and we add new item action.game. And that's it. Let's try it out. So we go to new game page and create new one, Arcadia Quest. And when we press save, bam, we immediately see this game added to our collection. And we're still making requests to server just to be sure that data is up to date. Excellent. So let's remove timeout from server code. So back to server.js file and remove these two lines. And that's it for this episode. If you found this video useful, please support my work by liking it, subscribing to this channel and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or preferably on my blog and follow me on Twitter to get updates. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.